Hi everyone, welcome back to another video by Yulan. And today we'll be continuing our, our journey in traumatic brain injury. And this video is our last video in this series. So please enjoy. So this in this video, we'll be talking about diagnosis and treatment, some future research directions, and a final conclusion. Um, yeah, thank you for your support. So first is the diagnosis and treatment. In general, the healthcare professionals would evaluate the level of severity by asking the patients questions about how the injury happened, assessing the person's level of consciousness and confusion, and doing an examination to appraise cognitive abilities, sensory perception, motor skills, and various aspects of brain function, encompassing um, memory, vision, hearing, touch, balance, coordination, gait, strength, sensation, reflexes, and other relevant indicators. In addition to the evaluation from healthcare providers, depending on the cause and level of sever severity, brain imaging methods may be used. Common methods include computed tomography, CD, CT, and magnetic resonance imaging, MRI, which is used to determine whether there is any, cere any cerebral hemorrhage or brain swelling. Similar to the diagnosis, the treatment of TBI also depends on the severity levels. The most serious traumatic brain injuries require specialized hospital treatment and may entail months of inpatient rehabilitation. However, since the majority of traumatic brain injuries are mild, usually a short hospital stay for observation or at-home monitoring followed by outpatient rehabilitation is good. According to the Alzheimer's Association, the impact of TBI on cognition is a relatively novel area of research for physicians and researchers. Numerous significant research endeavor, endeavors are currently in progress to deepen our understanding of injury patterns and brain alterations associated with TBI, as well as to formulate innovative approaches for prevention, diagnosis, and treatment. Consequently, the U.S. National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine, NASEM, Reports suggest that the creation and distribution of a TBI classification system that encompasses not just the GCS, but also include brain imaging and additional predictive biomarkers. Patients could undergo, could under, patients could undergo periodic reclassifications throughout their treatment and recovery phases. A refined TBI classification could include associated conditions resulting from the injury, such as subdural hem hematoma, skull fracture, or contusion. So here comes the final conclusion. In summary, this lecture provides a comprehensive video of traumatic brain injury, um, covering its cl classification, diagnosis, treatment, and pathophysiology. TBI's, uh, sorry, TBI's classification is essential for tailoring treatment, emphasizing the need for a comprehensive system that includes imaging and biomarkers. Early diagnosis using advanced neuroimaging techniques is crucial for prompt intervention. The pathophysiology of TBI, from primary mechanical damage to secondary processes, highlights the complexities involved and the need for ongoing research. Treatment involves a range of interventions, emphasizing the interdisciplinary, sorry, interdis, interdis, interdisciplinary approach requ required for TBI management. Here are my references for this entire series of TBI and hope you enjoy and if you like if you enjoy this video please like please click the like button and subscribe um please thank you for your listening thank you